And today, today I've got something special for you all. This is my Hall of the Lunar Champion, a home you can unlock for free by completing the Elsewhere storyline. It is a manor home, meaning it falls into the largest class of homes in ESO, and as such, provides the most space for furnishings. It also has four separate spaces to design, a main hall and three wings that you can unlock by continuing the Elsewhere storyline and completing the dungeons associated with the Year of the Dragon. Now, for many years, I used this as a storage facility for extra furnishings, but when I finally decided to start furnishing this one, I really wanted to accomplish three things. I wanted a hall where I could display every monster trophy in the game. I wanted an epic custom aquarium, bigger than any I'd previously created. And I wanted to create a custom market square with custom buildings that was full of life. Now, in order to accomplish my goals, I did need to complete a handful of trials and then get very creative with my furnishings as the 700 traditional furnishing limit comes up pretty quick when you're working on a home of this size. Now, this design might not be for everyone. The theme is more meta than roleplay friendly, and at the end of the day, this is about showing off a collection more than anything. And here we are in the main hall of the Lunar Champion. And like I mentioned earlier, I wanted to create a space where I could display all of the monster trophies from the game. Now, I've split them up into four categories here, roughly four categories anyway. There's a couple more behind me on a wall that I added up here. And then, of course, we've got the two in the back there that are not wall-mounted trophies. Right here, I've created a table for my small council. And, of course, we've got Bastion and Miri inside. I've got the other two companions outside uh, with some trinkets from my adventures. And backing it all up is the largest aquarium I've ever created in the Elder Scrolls Online. I went ahead and splurged and picked up a couple crown store items to complete the look. I am super pleased with how this turned out and it is awesome. Now I haven't disabled the portal in the back there and uh, we'll get to that in a bit, but it actually leads to something very special. Now like any good home design in the Elder Scrolls Online, I have created a little vendor area over here for the peddler of prizes. I've got some antiquities and collectibles and just random items that I thought would make this shop look cool. And then behind me is a room that I created custom just for this house uh, by enclosing the two walls. And this is my crafting area with my assigned crafting stations. So I believe I've got Morkeldens over here and Hunting's Rage over here. And then of course, an enchanting station and alchemy station for all of my crafting needs. And then since I was running low on furnishings, I actually used four collectible slots to place some of those ESO plus paintings we've been getting over the recent months. All right, let's head over to the other side of the main hall. Now on the side of the main hall, I have a space for my banker, the Baron. And uh, of course I've got my elsewhere treasure pile and lots of the paintings that I've collected from ESO over the years. Uh, and then there is my storage center back there with all of the storage chests. Now on this side, instead of a crafting area, I do have uh, an outfit station here, but instead of a crafting area, I've turned this into my game room. And I believe I have collected one of each of the table games that are available in ESO. Uh, can't play any of them, but uh, I like having the collection here, along with my Tales of Tribute winnings. Uh, I still need to get that last trophy. I think there's one more, maybe two more that I haven't earned. All right, so the portal inside my epic aquarium leads to the Moongrave Fane Wing, but in my house, it also shrinks you down and allows you to do battle with the crab who inhabits the tank. That's right, I've completely sectioned off this area and decorated it with oversized undersea furnishings to play up this experience, complete with the oversized crab target. So you can parse in here, work on rotations, and then just hop back through to the main lane. Now, before we move on to my favorite part of this house, and I can't believe I'm saying that because this custom aquarium behind me is one of my favorite things I've ever created in ESO, let's go ahead and make a quick stop at the Lion's Cradle Overlook. I've seen a lot of very cool designs for that space, but I really needed to save furnishing slots for the main event, so it's a little sparse. Still, I think I've managed to create a bit of a cozy Khajiit-themed bedroom and patio. Now, if Zoss ever gives us a few more furnishing slots to play with, I'd definitely like to add a few more items here. But out here on the patio, basically I've just got some patio furniture, my gong, there's a couple extra trees, and the fire pit. And then if we head inside, you'll see the cozy Khajiit bedroom I was talking about a minute ago. 
So a few more nice collectibles, antiquities in here. Uh, nicely appointed, but nothing special, I don't think. I kind of took the same approach I do with most in-rooms, trying to have just a couple of nice pieces. I actually swapped out the floor and did this sort of raised bed, and I think it's a nice look. I also managed to use this gazebo in here. It saved me a furnishing slot because I was able to hang the lanterns both from one furnishing rather than having like two bars or beams or whatever sticking out to hang them off of. And then for this one, I got a little creative and uh, used the uh, the replica blade of woe. It's a nice space, nothing, nothing to write home about, but let's head back to the main hall now and uh, on to the main event as we make our way over to the Halls of the Colossus area. All right, here we are, my enchanted market square. And here you'll find everything from Daedric enchanting stations, a cursed fireworks show of Meridia, a spriggan garden full of Mundu stones. But all kidding aside, this is my favorite part of the house and with the new hourglass collectible, you can decide what time of day looks best. So. I prefer midnight just to show off all the cool lighting. Let me head over here and flip it over. I also have a couple of different music boxes here uh, and I'll switch it from time to time to change up the music. So let's go ahead and turn off the castle theme and we'll turn on this sort of enchanted forest theme. All right, let's take a look around here. Oh, I love that we can change the time of day now. And we've actually got some clear skies, which is nice. So right up front here, this is my uh, wood crafting station out here with the Order's Wrath assigned. I've gone ahead and done up the portal, and you can see I've basically completely covered the wall here uh, with vines. One of the things I really wanted to do out here was cover up all of the existing structures. So you can see these Leowin towers are pretty strategically placed uh, to hide the existing structures that were out here and allow me to create my own market square. I was struggling for a long time to figure out the centerpiece until they added this Tree of Ifray in the Crown Store recently, and I love it. And uh, it actually comboed really nicely with the statue. And then uh, I've got a Cursed Orb of Meridian there lighting everything up, and I added some fungi and uh, other plants to just give the tree a little bit more visual interest. Uh, and I love that you can change the seasons, although the purple is my favorite, and then of course that meant I had to get these Jester's trees from the holiday uh, furnishing vendor to sort of go along with the look. I've done my best to kind of hide the things I don't want to see here. Oh, there's one of my favorite things. I figured out you could tuck paintings into these towers. Normally it's just kind of like a black void, but I like having a little, a little something there to look at. So let's check out my Mundus stone garden over here. Of course, I've got as many target dummies as possible throughout. Got lucky with a crown crate and picked up the Spriggan one. Um, but these are the three Mundu stones I find the most useful for my characters. Uh, I forget which ones. I think that one's the Steed. I use that for new characters, sometimes tanks. Uh, I want to say this is the Warrior, and I forget what this one is, but it's the, it's the plus critical damage and healing, so kind of good for everybody. I, I wanted to create at least three custom structures. I've got four here, so I've got this sort of like fortified in-room. Then uh, there's a two-story building back there, uh, a little one-story here, and a one-story here. And uh, I was running out of furnishings, but then I realized I could use tents for the ceiling and roof. And uh, it looks a little silly, but I don't hate it. So uh, hopefully we'll get a furnishing piece that I can uh, replace that with in the future. But trying to make a roof out of a single furnishing is uh, not easy to do. These all are decorated on the insides, although you can see I've kind of just cheated for that second floor there rather than uh, trying to figure that out. The, the tent wasn't a perfect fit. But Daedric Enchanting Station and uh, just a few other Telvani decorations in here. Alright, before we go down uh, around the corner, let's go ahead and check out the interior of my fortified in-room here. And this is where I've got my armory station and my dye station. There's another bed here and some, some sparse decor. But this is a perfect spot to come change my build or, you know, work on a new uh, outfit. And uh, it does have a back patio, which we can check out real quick. <laughs> Just another target dummy uh, and uh, a little gazebo. Uh, there's no way to get on the roof right now. Uh, it was going to take some real... It was going to take a pretty complicated staircase to make everything work out. And uh, I just didn't have the furnishing slots for it. All right. So two more buildings to check out here. And then we'll take a look around the corner. 
So this is where I've got my transmute station. And of course I've got the precursor guarding the front door. And this was a, a pretty tricky one to decorate just to get this shape and, and make it look interesting. But uh, it is a good spot to come do a little transmutation. And the second floor, again, very sparse. I was, it's the last thing I was working on and I was just out of furnishing. So you can see we've got a collectible <laughs> furnishing uh, for the door and then three collectible furnishings as sort of this hall of uh, their rewards for better completing better trials. Uh, and then just a bit of lighting back here to, to give the space a little bit more depth. Now we're gonna head down this little market street and you can see just sort of a little magical market street I've managed to create here with the, uh, the flags from the Leowin vendor and we've got the big uh, Ascendant Lore down here with some cool lighting. And uh, I did manage to pick up some of these uh, falling leaves as well. But before we poke our heads around the corner, let's hop in here. This is my bakery. Got my anniversary cakes on display. As you can see, I don't have them all. I've only been playing ESO for the last four years, so I, I'm not able to purchase the older cakes. Got my druidic provisioning station. Uh, another collectible right there that's from uh, Blackwood. Um, and a little bit more Telvani furniture. I just kind of, I saw some on sale and I like it. And uh, I think it fits the theme all right. Let's just poke our heads around the corner here. This is the end. And there he is, my trial targeting dummy the uh what's it what's it called the harrowing reaper that's right um and then of course i've got this wall up to to keep anyone from seeing too much of the mess uh you can see i did my best to kind of make that the backside look decent as well although if you were able to get outside of this you'd probably see a little bit of my mess all right so that is my market square in halls of the colossus and i'm really happy with how it all turned out I'm really proud of these structures and uh, it's just, it's really fun to come here and do some crafting, do some parsing and poke around. And I, I, I do wish I had another hundred furnishing slots or so because I think it could be so much better, but there's just no way to do it without totally sacrificing the rest of the house design, right? Uh, now, if you were really focused, it wouldn't take you four full years to farm up all this crap but it's not a collection that you can put together without investing some time and effort. I like to think of this house as the true end game, right? Something that's only possible once you've sort of beaten the Elder Scrolls online. And as such, I've opted to fill it with all of my most useful housing items, all of my assigned crafting stations, all of my target dummies, my Mundu stones, all the cool stuff that I've collected over the years. This is the home I now call my primary home. It's the one I visit to update outfits, craft new items, test new builds, change my Mundu stone, vendor, and bank. I'm incredibly proud with how it turned out, and it is open to the public if you'd like to take a closer look. In the description down below, you should find a command that will allow you to jump directly to the house. But if for some reason that doesn't work out for you, you can always add me as a friend in game. I play on the PC in a server, and my account name is Calamon with a zero, just like I am here on YouTube. Feel free to add me or just jump to me if you see me hanging out in the Hall of the Lunar Champion and you want to poke around. I'm also planning to add this house to the Essential Housing community, so you might be able to find me on there as well. Now, before I wrap up this video, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank not just my patrons, but everybody out there who has supported my channel over the last couple of years. I'm not sure I would have kept decorating houses in the Elder Scrolls Online if not for all of your positive feedback and comments. Now, if you'd like to get a sneak peek of my next home design, be sure to click the link on screen and head over to my Patreon. I'm working on a teaser video for the next home that I've got in the works, and I'll have it uploaded there soon. Now, I filmed this video using several of my characters, and I've actually recorded a sliders and customization video for most of them now. So, if you're looking for something to watch next, be sure to check that out in the end screen. I'll have the playlist of all of my characters linked there. That's going to do it for me today, guys. I'll be back again real soon with another ESO housing tutorial video for you all. Bye for now, everybody.